But as I said, recursive functions are more general than loops. So in addition to going forwards in a recursive function, we can also go back. Um, so I'd like to show you that. And if you think about it just abstractly, what I'm going to do is look at the list from the back to the front. So we'll start at the end of the list where it's empty uh, and we'll see that it's zero. Then looking at the last five, we'll add in one, then the two fives, two, then the 11 and back. So we're doing the computation going backwards rather than forwards. Um, formally, what's the difference? Well, the difference here is that I don't need a result parameter in my function because I'm not computing the result going forward. Instead, the result is the return value of this function. Um, and I use that return value in order to compute the result going backwards. And so here is um, the code for this. And it's not that dissimilar. So let's just look back and forth. Um, here is the forward version. What do I do in the forward version? I'm checking the bound here, obviously. And then I'm updating the result, then doing a recursive call with that updated result. In the backwards version, what do I do? Well, I um, initialize the result to zero here. So note that I don't have a result parameter. So I have a result local variable. And if I have not yet gone off the end, I, I first do the recursive call. And after the recursive call, I then add in the result. So the order here is just different. So in the forward recursion, we compute what we need to do here, then pass that newly updated result into the next recursive call. Whereas in a backward recursion, we just do the recursion immediately and then do the computation. So if you look at how this computes, we're going to start off with um, our recursive call to the num5's helper, which is going to initially, of course, have i as 0. And what we're going to do here is really just a bunch of recursive calls to get to the end of the list. So if you look at this, it doesn't really do anything interesting until it starts returning. So we're just going to do 1, 2, 3, um, you know, up to four recursive calls. And it's only when we get to the last recursive call where i is 4, that's where i is not properly less than the length, that we can just return. So this, this function, note that the results here are all 0. No computation has happened uh, that's of interest. All we've done is sort of gone through i up to the end. But at this point, we'll return 0. So the return value of 0 is passed back to the next iteration. So here you can see we've got the return of 0, which is now going to this iteration. And this iteration where we're looking at this element can now uh, look at its element and return 1. So now we're passing 1 back to the next iteration, which can add that into its result. Uh, in this case, we see something and we'll return 2. That passes 2 back. At this time, we're actually looking at the 11, so we don't see anything interesting. Um, so there's no increment, we just return 2. And we keep going backwards like this until we get back to our main function with the result 3. So here the call return pattern is different. Note that I have one fewer parameters. I don't have the result as I compute forward. Instead, I'm, I'm computing that result going back. So my calls simply get me to the end of the list. And it's when I'm doing the returns that I actually do work. Um, in literature, this is often referred to as a leap of faith, um, this recursive call. And uh, I, I guess the intuition here is that when, in order to solve the problem, you're assuming you can uh, solve it for the rest of the list. And now you're, you're using that value coming back. Um, to me, there's no less of a leap of faith uh, going forward. So I see um, this code as I have faith that I had done it in the past. In other words, I have faith that the result is correct at the point I get to it. 
Um, and likewise, in a while loop, even in a while loop, you need to have faith that at the moment I get to look at this point, the result actually re correctly reflects the previous computation. So there is a leap of faith, or, or if you like, an inductive reasoning that happens in all of these. It's just that in the loop version and in the forward recursion, we're looking at stuff um, in the past. So um, whereas in the backwards recursion, when it's written, it looks like we're talking about the future. But, but in fact, we're not talking about the future. We are still talking about the past. It's just that this call um, happens in the past after we use it. So the rest of the list is computed before uh, this element is computed. So if you just think about this as going forwards, going backwards, I think you'll be happy. Um, of course, recursion is general. And we can actually do computation both going forwards and going backwards. And to give you some exercise on this, um, here is a function which I invite you to look at by yourself. It's called sum until, and what it's going to do is uh, add all of the numbers until it finds a five. Uh, this is just an arbitrary thing I made up, but um, all of the numbers up to a five. So you can see here if we have the list um, displayed here. Then we'll add 11, 21, and 31, and then we'll stop. So in fact, we're doing a little bit of computation or decision making uh, before we do the recursive call. But this then is doing the additions going back. So I'm adding in the elements going backwards. So obviously, you can do computation in both directions.